Hey guys, today we're going to cover how to do a one object still life. I'm using a regular apple here. And uh, for my palette, the full palette's going to be titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and burnt umber and ivory black. So not too many colors, but um, enough to get us by with rendering an apple here. So what we want to start with is a normal sketch. You can see I've toned my canvas with some ivory black pre-toned. So I'm going to start my sketch using that same color, ivory black, with just a little bit of paint on my brush. Remember not to use too much paint when you're first starting the drawing. You want to work back to front. So first of all, I'm going to establish the horizon line. This is going to be close to the top third of the page. And then I'll work my way forward. So simple circular type of shape for the apple. And I'm drawing it slightly to the left because I want to leave enough room for the cast shadow going to the right. Notice that I'm creating the curvature with a series of planes. So, for example, this top curve is one, two, and three, and that continues down the rest of the apple, breaking it up into a series of planes. Makes it a little bit easier to work with when you're rendering the object initially. And do a little v-shape for where the stem is. I'm looking slightly overhead the apple. And then I want to draw my cast shadow going to the right, curving around and disappearing behind the apple here. So that gives me my basic shapes, a uh, very simple sketch. The second thing you want to do is render the shadow. So you want to figure out the form shadow on the apple. I'll draw a line for that going down the right. And this separates it into shadow side and light side. So two parts. And of course we have our cast shadow, which is a uh, part of the full shadow area as well. And that's all we need for the sketching part of it. So moving on to colors, start again with the background and work your way forward using a bigger brush now. It's a, about a size four flat brush, bristle brush, so it'll give me some nice mark making. And for the background, what I'm going to do is a, it's a simple black tone using ivory black. I'm going to use a little bit of stand oil, linseed stand oil, to thin out the paint, non-toxic. This will help it to flow better. I'm going to make sure I have enough of it. To cover the whole background. So mixing a little bit of stand oil into the ivory black. And I want to cover this whole top area loosely. So just being very free with my mark making, not overthinking it. alternating directions and I'm keeping the paint pretty thin because remember you want darker colors and oil painting to be thinner than your lighter colors which will help enhance the sense of form.
and painting a little over that outline. You want to overlap so that you don't end up with a gap in between the ground plane and the background. And the goal here is just to fill up this whole background area. We can always revisit it later if we want to and make any adjustments to it. So that's covered now with pure ivory black. One color throughout the whole thing. Now moving down to the ground plane, I'm going to mix this navy blue type of color. Um, so in order to mix this, it's going to be mainly ultramarine blue with a little black thrown in and a touch of white. So it's like a grayed down ultramarine blue. Be sure to mix a big batch of it because it's a large area. test it. It's pretty good to me. And again, just covering this whole area with some pretty free mark making. I'm overlapping the outline here as well. Again, so I don't end up with a gap in between the background and the object. Still adding some of the stand oil into this ground plane color so that it spreads more easily. I'm going to treat the cast shadow area as its own separate section. So what I'll do is work around it and overlap it as well on the edges. When I got to this top area, the ground plane, I want to create a nice smooth blend there so that it's not as in focus. So with a fairly dry brush, you can wipe it off and just graze right in between both colors. And you can see how that gives you a smooth blend from top to bottom. So following that main direction rather than going up and down. Very light touch with your brush. I'll continue covering that bottom right corner here. A little bit more stand oil. So that gives us a nice foundation color for a background. Now to block in this cast shadow, I'm going to use a bit more of the black and ultramarine blue. So changing up the ratio, less white in that main color here, more blue and more black. Ultramarine blue, ivory black. So it gives me a darker version of 
this blue color. And I'm just going to fill this in here, that shape that we've mapped out. So just a tiny bit more ivory black, so I'll just go ahead and add that. And have it bump against the ground plane color and blend. When you're blending cast shadows, what you want to keep in mind is how they're a little bit sharper towards the object. So the closer that edge of the shadow is to the apple, the harder the edge will be, not as much blending. So I want to pay attention to that and do more of a stark transition from this color to the shadow. And then as it goes back, more and more diffused. So more blending. So you end up with something like that. It's pretty good. So now that we have the background blocked in, we can go ahead and block in the apple. So I'll start with the shadow, this section here we've mapped out. And uh, to create that color that we see here, the main color here is going to be red. And it's kind of a mix of both the cadmium red and alizarin crimson. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. So let me grab my smaller flat brush here. And I'm going to use cadmium red with the laser and crimson mixed in. And a touch of black to get it even darker and a little more grayed down so the red won't be as intense in that shadow area. Then I'll fill this in as its own section. Painting all the way up to the edge. And I got another minor shadow here, which is the same color. So I'll go ahead and block that in. So that gives us a base for our shadow color. Now moving on to the light side, you're going to get a mix of both this more yellowish color and this reddish color, a lighter version of that. Um, so to start with, I'm going to stick with that reddish color. And what the mix will be is uh, still a cadmium red with alizarin crimson. But I won't use as much black. So I adjust the ratio to include less black. And you can see it's a lighter version of that color. I'm going to fill in any parts that I see are mainly red. It's going to be in this upper area here. All through here. Overlapping the edge where the blue is. It's okay if some of that blue mixes in, it won't affect the color too much. I'm just pressing lightly with my brush. A 
and you get some of that red traveling down towards the middle here as well. Um, it starts to mix with the yellow at this point, but what I can do is go ahead and just put in a little bit of red there, and then I'll do a back and forth when I get to this yellow color and kind of melt those two colors together. So that gives us pretty good blocking of the red. Now for the yellow, I'm going to use cadmium yellow with a touch of Naples yellow mixed into it. The Naples yellow will help to lighten the cadmium yellow slightly. So you can see a pretty nice vibrant color and I'll begin by just blocking out the main areas where I see more yellow going on. And I'm carefully overlapping where it's blue. So here what may happen is with this color it can turn greenish. So I'm pressing again lightly with my brush and wiping off as I go and reapplying the yellow. So that the color stays pretty clean. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to meld these colors together here and start to do this back and forth interplay where the yellow and the red blend into one another slightly. Keep wiping off my brush and reapplying yellow as I need it. You can see it comes in more down here and extends towards the shadow and mixes with the red more. You also get it appearing up here towards the stem, a bit of yellow there. And I, I'm beginning to use the yellow color to indicate some hints of texture here and there of the skin of the apple. So some short, choppy brushwork overlapping the red to give me more of that texture that I see. I can see too that there's some yellow poking through on this side, which helps to create more of a reflective light. So I add some of that yellow on my brush and apply it directly on the right edge of the apple, traveling down, following the curve. It's going to go, you know, all the way up actually and travel to here. And you want to blend that inner edge so it's soft. 
and blending here as well, making sure it's a good smooth transition. Get a bit lighter. So what I'm getting is a reflective light area followed by a coarse shadow which transitions into the midtone, which is pretty much this whole area of light that we filled in. The other part that we want to make sure we get is the highlight. So you have one main highlight on this upper left part of the apple here and then a minor one up there. So you'll take this uh, reddish and yellow color, those two kind of mix together and add a lot of white. And pretty thick paint, you want to place the highlight right about here where it's hitting the strongest. Very light touch. And I'm going to blend around the edges, keeping the middle of that highlight as is, so it stays bright. Carefully diffusing around that highlight. You can add more white if you need to. And like I mentioned, there's one here as well, smaller one. And then diffuse around the edges as well. So we have our main components that we're looking for with the highlight, mid-tone, and shadow areas. Remember, those are the three parts that you always want to try to identify when rendering form. At this point, you want to focus on refinements. So what I'm going to do is focus on creating more of a sense of texture and subtlety in between the yellow and red tones on the light side of the apple. So I want to blend wherever I feel like I need to blend more. Very light touch. Really mainly just using what's there and softening it. I'm also continuing to add texture wherever I feel like I need it with some small marks overlapping this main area. And next I can take my detail brush and create even smaller details and subtlety with some mark making. Taking some more yellow and applying more textural marks where I 
feel like I need it. Just working it in. more textural marks towards the top of the apple to give it a greater sense of realism. Touch more yellow up here. See I got some blue there but that's okay. I just want to overlap that with some more yellow and it will just kind of meld right in. little more on the shadow as well, hints of yellow, maybe even a bit more texture. As you do this, you can continue to refine the edges as well. Clean up anything that may look a little fuzzy around the edges and sharpen them. little bit more detail towards the stem, more yellow, textural marks here. Very short marks following the form, so going upwards here. Now for the stem, what you want to do is, uh, from my angle, what I see is the lights hitting the very top of this stem, it's like a circular area, and you get the actual side of this stem and more shadow. So what I'll do is begin with the top using Naples yellow, and I want to pinpoint it, make it right around here for the tip of the stem, and then draw my line coming down this way into the crevice and next what I'll do is take some burnt umber, my dark brown color, pure burnt umber and darken the side of the stem. Now if you want to see that stem more clearly against the shadow what you could do is take some of the red and mix it into this shadow area so it contrasts a little bit more. And a little more brown on the stem, the burnt umber. That way when you look at it up close you can see the stem more clearly. And I can 
Continue cleaning out some of the edges. Little more blending around the highlight. Just carefully with some white. So as I'm doing this, applying textural marks here as well, with short marks. So that gives us a pretty good feel for the apple. If we want to revisit the background a little bit and, you know, create a bit more gradation, we could always add just a little, like a touch of Naples yellow and add it into the left side of the background to create more of a transition. carefully working into the side of the apple. So just taking a bit of Naples yellow in increments and mixing it into what's there. So it blends into this blue color and gradually you want to blend it as it goes to the left. This will give more of a sense of light and grounding to the object. Keep adding as you feel is needed. Up to here. And diffuse. And it goes to the right. And you can go back and forth between the apple and the background, making sure you have a clean edge between the apple and the background color. Just refining the edge. And at this point, you have all the main components that you need. Any final details you could put in. Um, one of them could be 
under the cast shadow may get a little deeper with some more black and create a very thin shadow underneath the apple. Goes up to about there. And that will fade into the rest of the cast shadow. So final details can maybe darken the stem a little more. Maybe a few punches on the shadow, the core shadow, some black. Add it a little more contrast. But at this point, you have pretty much all of what you, you're looking for in a painting like this. So the key elements are identifying all the aspects that convey form. So remember those three parts, shadow side, mid-tone, and highlight. For cast shadow, which diffuses as it gets further away from the object. And some more refinements would be like the reflective light on the edge of the shadow area here. And then you would finalize with some more color subtleties that interplay between the yellow and the red and some textural marks using smaller brush or the side of a flat brush to get some of these more textural uh, choppy type of brush marks which give more of the feel of the apple. So hopefully that helps with identifying some basic concepts with oil painting. Feel free to leave me any comments if you have any questions about the process, uh, materials, uh, any part of the painting uh, that you may be wondering about. Happy to help however I can. But uh, that's it for now, and until then, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.